Today I will be telling you the story from the Bidayuh people of Sarawak called The Tale of the Honey Tree. Come join me. Hi everyone, my name is Heidi, I'm a Malaysian author and welcome back. For the past few weeks, we've been looking closely at this theme of sibling rivalry, which was one of the themes I highlighted in the episode on Bawang Puteh, Bawang Mira, which I think is episode 27. I'll put a link down below to that episode if you want to have a look. If you recall, there were other themes from that story and this week I wanted to look at the theme of maternal protection in the form of a magical object. So if you recall, Bawang Pute's dead mother was transformed first into a magical fish and then she was subsequently transformed into a life-giving tree. So Once again, if you haven't seen that episode, I urge you to have a look at that episode so that you can follow the themes that I'm going to talk about. So during the course of researching that story, Bawang Puteh Bawang Mera, I came across another folk tale from the Bidayo people of Sarawak. The Bidayo people are an ethnic group who live in Sarawak. And this story has a similar theme. This story is called The Tale of the Honey Tree. Let's listen to that story. Once upon a time, there was a boy called Sijurai who lived in a longhouse deep in the jungles of Sarawak. His mother and father had passed away a long time ago and the poor orphan only had his grandmother to care for him. But that was all right because at least he had someone and his grandmother did take very good care of him. According to the customary law of this longhouse, People in the longhouse were supposed to take care of those who had fallen on bad times. But the chief of this particular longhouse was greedy, he was cruel, he only wanted to look after his own family. One day, someone from the longhouse found some honey. And as with the custom of the people of this longhouse, they laid out a huge banana leaf. They placed the honey on that leaf and everyone in the longhouse took their share of the honey. All the children squealed with joy as they tasted the sweet treat. But there was one child who did not get his share and that was Sijurai. No one bothered to give him any honey. No one bothered to call him over. They thought he was just a poor orphan and that he didn't deserve this marvelous treat. Sijurai watched from behind a bush as everyone enjoyed the honey and he waited until everyone had gone. He Then he went up to the banana leaf to see if there was any honey left over and to his joy, he saw that there was a tiny little drop of honey. He gingerly picked up that drop of honey with his finger and he was just about to taste it when he remembered his grandmother. So being a good boy and loving his grandmother so much, he ran to find her. He said, Grandmother, look, I've got some honey to share with you. The grandmother looked at the tiny drop of honey on his finger and she said, Why have they given you honey like that? Usually they must put it on a banana leaf. And uh, Sijurai replied, Oh, they didn't give me the honey. I had to wait till everyone finished and then I took what was left over. When grandmother heard this, she was so sad. She was so upset that they were treated so cruelly by the people in this longhouse. And then she became angry. Her face turned red and it made Sijurai quite frightened. She told Sijurai, This is a cruel longhouse. We should move away. They no longer care for us. And Sijurai said, it's okay, I don't mind. I just wanted a tiny taste of honey. And the grandmother said, Sijurai, listen to me. One day I will no longer be here. And when that day happens, you must look for me. I will be waiting for you at the second bend in the river. Sijurai was scared. He didn't want his grandmother to go away. He didn't want her to leave him. He promised that he would look for her, But for the next few days, he stuck to her like glue because he didn't want her to leave the longhouse. But one day, he had to go out. He had to find food for them. And when he returned, grandmother was gone. He ran around looking for help. He ran to the chief. Please, can we look for my grandmother? It is getting late. Um, I'm I'm scared that she is lost in the jungle. The chief said to Sijurai, the sun has already set. I'm not going to risk any of my men to look for that 
old, frail woman. The very next day, Sijurai ran out of the longhouse. He searched for his grandmother and then he suddenly remembered what she had said. So he went to the river. He went to the second bend of the river to look for her, but she was not there. Feeling distraught and upset, Sijurai fell to the ground and began crying his eyes out. He was so sad that his grandmother was gone. Just then, the breeze began to blow and he could smell his grandmother's lovely smell. He looked up and he saw a magnificent tualang tree. A tualang tree is the tallest tree in the rainforest. He looked at the tualang tree and then was surprised when it suddenly spoke. It said, Sijurai, why are you crying? I am right here. Sijurai wiped his tears and looked at the tree. Grandmother, is that you? The tree replied, yes, this is your grandmother. I am here. I am the tree that you see in front of you. The branches of the Tualang tree moved as if it was waving to him and the breeze brought the sweet, warm smell of his grandmother. A faint buzzing could be heard and when Sijurai looked up into the branches, he saw huge crescent moon shaped beehives filled with the most delicious rainforest honey. His grandmother spoke to him. She said, Sijurai, our long house has forsaken us. They have forgotten about their traditions and their customs to take care of us. But don't worry, Sijurai, this is how I will protect and take care of you. I can give you the honey that you want so much. I can give you protection. I can give you love. And then she whispered to Sijurai the secret of how to climb up this tall tree and how to harvest the honey. When the people of the longhouse saw the tall tualang tree with the honey in its branches, they got excited. They were planning to climb the tree and take the honey. But every time someone tried to climb the tree, they fell down and hurt themselves because the Tualang tree is the tallest tree in the forest and it's got quite a slippery bark. So there is a way of climbing it. But these people didn't know how to climb it. Only Sijurai knew how to climb it because his grandmother had told him the secret. Sijurai decided to climb the tree. He used his grandmother's secret to climb the tree. He got up there. He cut down some honeycomb and he came down with some beautiful, delicious honey. And when the people of the longhouse saw the honey, they licked their lips and they said to Sijurai, aren't you going to share that honey, Sijurai? Sijurai looked at the people of the longhouse. He said to them, I'm not going to share this honey with you. You had honey yesterday and you refused to share it with me. You didn't even think of me. So I'm going to take this honey and I'm going to move out of this longhouse. I'm going to find a new family. I'm going to find a new longhouse. And that is exactly what he did. Sijurai left for his new life. And with the protection of his grandmother, he was always blessed with honey from the magic Tualang tree, which he shared with his new longhouse family. The end. This folktale originates from the Bidayo people of Sarawak. So before the arrival of organized religions like Christianity and uh, Islam, the Bidayos and many of the ethnic people in this area, they held animistic beliefs. So they believed and prayed to the spirits of the natural world. So their way of life was governed by their adat or their customary law, which defines and instructs them on how to survive in the challenging environment of the rainforest. So when you're living in the jungle, you will face periods of crop failure, illness and threats from other longhouses, which meant that it was really important for the community to be united in order to survive. It's not surprising that the core element of this adat, this customary law, is a strong sense of communal sharing and equality, which encompasses the longhouse cultures of most of the ethnic people in East Malaysia. In this regard, it is quite common to share whatever bounty, whatever food and resources are available such as meat from a successful hunt, bounty from the harvest, and jungle delicacies such as wild honey. So the whole unit of the longhouse basically functions as one family. So just in case you're not aware, a longhouse is where many of the ethnic people uh, in Sabah and Sarawak live. It is what it sounds like. It is basically a very long house. 
but each family gets their own room. Many families live in this longhouse and they are under the protection of a longhouse chief who leads uh, these people. So this longhouse comprises of different families, many different families, but they are all they all should be one unit, one family working together. So if one family falls on hard times, everyone in the longhouse is supposed to look after them. Obviously, this did not happen in this particular story because Sijurai was excluded simply by being a poor orphan. They refused to even call him to uh, come and have some honey. So he was deemed unworthy. And when the grandmother went missing and he pleaded for help, no one bothered to help him. So once again, we see how scarcity and this fight over limited resources uh, play a big role in these kind of stories. Sijurai has to literally fight for that tiny morsel of honey from the other occupants of the longhouse. Living in a traditional longhouse, Sijurai and his grandmother should not have to compete over food, shelter and protection because under normal circumstances, the adat should have protected them. However, in their longhouse, this adat was disregarded. And as a result, Sijurai was left unprotected and subject to abuse and neglect. As I mentioned before, fight over limited resources or scarcity forms the basis of the most riveting fairy tales, since the search for food, shelter, and safety is a basic human need. This is why so many fairy tales center around food and being fed. Allowing a child to go hungry can lead to overwhelming feelings of insecurity for that child. They, they can feel worthless and empty. So to be fed, to go to sleep with a full stomach is a sign that you're looked after. To not be fed, to go to sleep hungry, to be deprived of something as basic as a meal signifies the opposite. So you can imagine how this particular story can really resonate with small children. During the course of growing up, children discover that the world is fraught with pitfalls and that they must keep their wits about them if they hope to avoid major disasters. Fairy tales, in addition to everything else, represents a way for children to practice their problem-solving skills. The dilemmas faced by the main characters, the protagonists in fairy tales, teach children they can succeed in the world if they draw on their inner resources because the solution to a problem often lies with Within themselves. In the tale of the honey tree, Sijurai is the runt of the litter. He is the poor orphan that no one thinks about, and yet he is resourceful in finding the honey tree and being able to climb and harvest the honey. No other person from the longhouse can do this. So, this is quite a useful and comforting message for children because. All children feel at some point in their lives unloved and passed over by their parents. So a story in which the weakest member of the family emerges victorious can be comforting as well as uplifting. Let's talk about the honey tree and its similarity with the tree in Baung Pute Baumera and the tale of Yixian from China. So the tree with its life-giving properties and its connection to the earth is a common theme in these kind of stories, symbolizing the spirit of the good mother. Reaching from beyond the grave, she offers comfort and protection to the child, letting them know that they are not alone. The transformation of the mother and in this, this particular story, the grandmother into a tree, represents a kind of wish fulfillment uh, for the child. As a symbol, the tree represents all all that is good in the protagonist. It basically fulfills a universal need in children to feel that they are loved and cherished, to know that someone will always have their back and will be there for them. Listening to or reading these tales, a child will be comforted and it helps them to um, lessen the fears of maternal loss. The idea that people who die can be an ongoing source of comfort is quite a difficult concept for children to grasp, but it can be easily illustrated in stories like Baum Pute Baumera and The Honey Tree, which is why these types of fairy tales and folk tales are so important and should be told to every child. The tale of The Honey Tree shares the same theme as Baum Pute Baumera in that the suffering and unfair treatment of the two protagonists has caused them to take active steps in order to secure their future. In the end, Sijurai goes through a transformation in his character from being a timid 
orphan boy to a mature young man able to make rational decisions about his own life. So what did you think of this story? I'd love to hear your thoughts, so please do leave a comment. If you like this video and my other videos, please do like and subscribe to my channel. Please do share this channel so that I can get more content out there so that I can reach more people. And please do uh, support me in my mission to get these new Santara fairy tales out there. That's it for this episode, but don't go just yet. Check out my episode on Baung Pute Baung Mera and also the tale of Yisian. Uh, links are down below. Take care and I'll see you in the next episode.